Now, you might have noticed that trees in S5 can get very cumbersome. Um, last In the last video we saw a, a tree in S5 and there were arrows all over the place. It really takes up a, a quite a lot of space. And in fact, if you have just three worlds, then you'll have to express all of these facts about the accessibility relation. All of these here. And that's just with three worlds. So if you're drawing the worlds and the arrows, um, as I say, it takes up a lot of room and it can be difficult to keep track of all the arrows. And if you're using the indexing method, then you might end up writing more facts about uh, accessibility than you do actual formulas. That's just with three worlds. Um, in fact, S5 trees can be very easily simplified. All you have to bear in mind is that in S5, our trees are universal. Every world accesses every other world. And because of that, we can state a general rule, which is that for any worlds X and Y, Y is accessible from X. And that's just a, a general rule there. And because of this, what this means is that we don't really need to write write any of this stuff. All we have to do is just bear in mind, whenever we're making our trees, that all the worlds are accessible from each other. Um, so let's uh, just consider the characteristic formula of S5. If possibly P, then necessarily possibly P. We assume the negation, of course, and then we have a true antecedent and a false consequent. Now, at this point, we can use this, uh, this not necessarily here, for example, to open up a new world. But we don't need to write, we don't need to write in 0R1 or anything like that. We don't need to bother writing that because we have this general rule. We have this general rule here. So all, all we do is just open the new world, put in not possibly P. We don't have to bother actually writing any of this stuff in. Um, and then, of course, with, uh, with the possibly P, we can open up yet another world in which we derive P. And then we can use this not possibly P to derive not P in that world. And we have a contradiction. And uh, you can follow that pretty easily, but we didn't really need to bother writing any of that stuff in because we, we have our general rule here uh, that for, for any world, for any world, it accesses every other one, including itself. Um, so just keep that rule in mind and you can simplify your trees by quite a great deal. Precisely the same point applies to the other tree method. You don't really need to bother drawing the arrows here. Uh, every world will access every other one and you can by keeping that in mind just do it without having to fill the page up with loads of arrows that's obviously not the case in any other system it's only in S5 because S5 is a universal system um, so only in only in universal systems can you do this none of the other ones that you've looked at uh, would, would this be appropriate for uh, okay well I hope I hope that was a, a little bit helpful um, Obviously, that's not, you know, necessarily sort of formally correct what we've done there, but uh, it does it does make writing it out a bit easier, and that's that's what's most important as long as you get the um, as long as you get it right. Um, okay, well, thanks for for watching that.